Hey everybody, it's Maria Brophy and I'm going to talk to you today about three ways to leverage your art so you can earn money from it again and again and again. And we are doing this live. So if you're here with me live, please feel free to ask questions. As a matter of fact, I want you to ask me questions. And um, because your questions really help me to know what to talk about, what you're thinking about, right? What you need to know. Okay, so I'm going to get started. And um, let's see. The first thing, and I'm and I'm, I'm using StreamYard, so I'm kind of still learning how to use it, but I figured out that I can use these really cool banners. So the three ways to um, leverage your art, the first thing I want to talk about is direct sales and reproductions of your art. Now, you know, Matt, you know, you already know about this, but here's what I want to do. I want to back up for a second. Why would you want to sell reproductions of your art? Why would you want to put time into thinking about how to leverage it? Well, think about it this way. When you look at all the artists who are very successful, you will find that they are finding a way to leverage their art in one way or another, right? Like some artists don't believe in selling print reproductions of their paintings, and that's a personal preference, and that's fine. However, if they are making a full-time living with their art, they are finding ways to make a full-time living other than just selling a painting at a time. It's kind of like digging ditches, right? Now, forgive me for making the analogy between art and digging ditches, but just for the sake of making an analogy, I always like to say, you know, if all you do is sell a piece of art, one painting, right? You sell that painting and it's gone and you don't leverage it to make money, to pay your rent and feed your babies, you have to paint and sell another painting. And it's your time and it's your energy and it's physical. And um, so, how do you leverage it? You One way is to make reproduct, reproductions of your art available. So prints here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you an example. I've got all kinds of examples for you. Um, you know, here's a paper print, right? You can also sell um, canvas prints. This is my favorite piece of art Drew's ever done. This is, a, this is a print reproduction, and we sell a lot of these because this is a really popular image. And as a matter of fact, um, the original hasn't even sold yet because it's a $75,000 piece. And Drew's clientele, unfortunately, we don't really have a super wealthy clientele. So it may be years before we sell that piece of art. If you're not sure if selling reproductions is for you or not, then... Um, think about this, okay? Like I said earlier, it's a personal preference. It's up to you. So some artists, like in the really fine art world where they're selling 10, 20, 30, 50,000 dollar paintings, they may not want to sell print reproductions. Now, I'm not saying they shouldn't. I actually think they should, but um, that's my opinion. But it is a business model that some artists like to only sell the original. On the flip side of that, one of the artists that I work with that is very successful, she doesn't sell any of her originals. She holds on to them and she only sells print reproductions. So it's a personal choice. And you just have to ask yourself, what is it that you resonate and, you know, selling reproductions of your art is much like a museum selling albums or um, a museum, a musician, <laughs> a musician selling albums, right? Or CDs, digital, digital reproductions of a song. If a musician writes a song and they sell that song to one person, even if they sell that song for a thousand dollars, and they never sell it again. Boy, are they giving up all their future earning 
potential. And why would a musician do that? They, they wouldn't, right? So why do that with your art? So the next thing that you can do to leverage your art, and by the way, I wanna say, in a few minutes, I'm going to show you an example of how you pull a lot of things together to make money off your images in multiple ways simultaneously, okay? So hang in here. And for some of you, it's going to blow your mind because you're going to say, why haven't I been doing this all along? And some of you might say, I didn't know I could do this, right? So, um, okay. Let me see. Wait a minute. I want to go to the chat, the live chat, just to see if there's any, any comments. Yeah, Abby McClure. Hi, Abby. Just bring Abby up here. Thank you for joining me. And I'm going to say hi to Edju Constance. Oh, hey, um, Kathleen and Cousin Amy. So glad to have you guys here. Thank you. I love it. Having live viewers is what really helps me a lot. Um, because I don't like talking to myself. I really need to have people in the room with me. Okay, so back to licensing your art to print on other people's products. And by the way, ask any question in the chat in the chat or in the comments, and I will get to it. So art licensing, for some people, this sounds a little scary, right? Because the word licensing, it's like a legal word. And oh my gosh, you know, how do I handle it? But it's not that complicated, really. I mean, it could be as simple as allowing, look, I'm looking around for an example here. Hold on. Um, it could be as simple as allowing someone to um, print your art on their stickers, right? So these are licensing examples. And by the way, I mean, I'm using Drew's art as an example. Sorry, I'm holding it upside down. Um, I'm using his art as an example. And you know, his art is uh, kind of edgy and poppy and lifestyle-y. But this, what I'm talking about applies to any kind of art. You can be a fine artist, you know, selling your work to collectors for 40 grand a pop. And what I'm talking about applies to you also and everyone in between. So um, I just use Drew's art as an example because it's right here at my fingertips and I have his permission. And so it's easy for me to do. But here's an example. All right, here's a great example of a licensing deal. This is Drew's art on a cell phone cover. People are buying cell phone covers constantly. There's so cell phone cover companies license art and they license all kinds of art. So that's an opportunity, um, you know, stickers and t-shirts and coffee mugs. So, so much. And um, if you want to learn more about this, in the description of this video is a link to my Art Licensing 101 online course. And it's a great course. I'm, people love it. And you'll learn a ton from it. So check it out. All right. I'm going to see if there's any um, questions. Okay. I don't see any questions right now, but please, you know, ask me a question about art licensing or whatever. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is a collaboration license. So a collaboration slash license, it's kind of, you. everybody knows what a collaboration is, right? So we just recently did a collaboration for Drew's Art on beer cans. And it's really awesome because, um, gosh, I wish I could show it to you, but it's, I don't have it yet. I'm going to get it like, I'm going to get, they're going to send us the beer um, in the next week or two, which is a really fun thing about doing collaborations is you get the stuff, right? They send you the samples of whatever it is. And it's also a license, right? So this beer company, it's a beer company called Altam Altamont Beer Works in California. And they wanted to take Drew's trip it's called trip artwork that he did 25 years ago 
he did this artwork and they did a licensing agreement with us where we get paid for them to use it on their beer cans and they are also putting it on beach towels and stickers and um, it's amazing because talk about leveraging art that you did 25 years ago and using music as an example. You see this with music all the time. Um, you know, gosh, I was just watching a movie the other night. I can't remember. I can't remember the name of the movie. What was the movie? It was about um, Bradley. Uh, anyway. I can't remember, but what I do remember is the music in the movie was awesome. And this, you know, they licensed the mu the music to use it in the movie, right? And some of these songs go back to the seventies, which is why I love the movie because I was a little tiny child in the seventies and that music brought back good memories for me. So um, that's how musicians, make money off of their music all the time. And as a matter of fact, some of the wisest words of wisdom when it comes to business is something I read that Dolly Parton said many, many years ago. Dolly Parton said that when she wrote one of her best selling songs, and of course I can't remember the name of it right now because I'm just going back in my memory here. Um, but she said at the time that she wrote the song, she did. It wasn't a bestseller. And Elvis Presley approached her. And here Dolly Parton was this new musician, didn't know much about anything, wasn't making money yet. And Elvis Presley came to her and said, I want to buy all the rights to that song. And I'm going to pay you this much. And it was a lot of money. <clears throat> and Dolly Parton thought, hmm. She was tempted. I mean, can you imagine Elvis wanting to buy your song? Of course you would sell to him unless you knew a little something about business and the future. And Dolly Parton learned from her dad some business sense. Her father taught her that. And she said, you know, I think if this song is good enough for Elvis to buy it, I'm probably going to make money off of this song for the rest of my life. And she did, and it turned out to be one of her biggest hit songs ever. So that is what, you know, what to think about, something to think about when you're thinking about your artwork, right? Okay, so here's a good question from Olivia Merritt. Olivia asked, how do you find companies and how do you present your work to them? Okay, Olivia, I'm glad you asked this question. So first of all, you start Googling, you brainstorm. A lot of people don't know how to brainstorm. You know, my whole career, I've been, actually I spend every morning just about brainstorming ideas. Sometimes I have to not brainstorm because I get too many. So I want you to sit down and think about your art and what you do and think of what kind of companies would be a good fit for your art. And you really think about this, right? And you give this some thought and you write down some ideas and then you Google keywords. So if your art is of a particular niche lifestyle, let's say you like to paint eggplants or do digital design of eggplants. I mean, there are actually artists who are obsessed with eggplants and that's what all their art is about, eggplants and other vegetables. Well, start Googling companies that are aligned with vegetables and you'd be amazed at how many opportunities there are out there. Really amazed, right? So start brainstorming, number one, number two, present your portfolio to them. And there is a way to do that without it being complicated. And by the way, that is my live stream tomorrow at the same time. I am bringing on a guest, Ronnie Walter, who's going to teach a little bit about how uh, she's going to get tips on the best way to present your artwork to companies. Okay. So that was a great question, Olivia. Thank you for that. All right. Um, let's see. And then 
how to leverage commissioned artworks. Now, I'm going to give you a few examples because the examples are easier than me using a lot of words to explain this. All right. So I'm going to reach back here and show you this. Well, first I'll start with the simple examples. Okay. So this is called Baja Bad, right? This is the, the original painting was a commission by a guy named Steve Watson, who is an author of books. And he want, he's a fan of Drew's. He wanted Drew to paint a painting on canvas that he could hang in his home. And he wanted to license it to for his one of his book covers. And so we what we do in this case. And he's a self-published author, so he doesn't have a huge company behind him. You know, <clears throat> he doesn't have a huge publisher behind him. So what we did, we gave him the, the commissioned price for a commission painting. And then we tacked on a little extra for the license for him to use it on his book, Baja Bad. And in addition to that, we sell art prints of this and it's turned out to be one of Drew's popular prints. And we sell it on canvas and this happens to be a paper print. And I'm sure we're gonna do other things with this in the future. We'll print it on other things. I don't know what yet, but you know, we'll probably print it on stickers and t-shirts and all kinds of stuff because people love this image. We did the same thing with this image. This was a commission painting by a musician named Morgan Shaughnessy. Now she just wanted the painting to hang on her wall. And we have licensed this to um, companies to print on glassware, actually. And we are licensing, licensing this part of it for a company called Mood Mats. So they make these uh, mats that um, you put on your table to protect your glass. Uh, anyway, they're really cool. Some people hang them on the wall. And um, we've sold tons of canvas prints of this. We've done so much with this artwork. And this started out as a painting commission for a client. Okay. And I'm going to see, I think I see there's a comment here. Oh, just Olivia saying thank you. You're welcome, Olivia. Olivia. Okay. Um, all right. Now, this one takes it a couple steps further. This was a commercial. This was a commercial product, right? Commercial as in a company called Magical Butter. They were the big sponsor for this concert tour with Sublime with Rome and, the, and Dirty Heads, two bands, on tour, Magical Butter hired Drew, they commissioned Drew to create an artwork for this concert poster. And this was also printed on stickers, concert t-shirts. Um, I think it was also on um, wraps that went on the tour bus. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, so they commissioned Drew to do this, right? They paid him a, um, they paid him, you know, for the commission. They got the digital images and then they made the poster. We didn't because we don't do graphic design work. So, um, and that's in all our contracts. If they want us to do the graphic design work, we have somebody on our team and they, we charge extra for that. So we just give them the digital assets. But when Drew creates art, he creates paintings because that's what he likes to do. He gets mileage out of it. So we have a painting of this and a painting of this, and they're big. And so those paintings are available for sale. And, but wait, there's more. Um, so this is, this is a print of one of the paintings. And then here's a print. I mean, this art is so crazy, but we're, we sell art prints of this, right? And, and then also the paintings, we make money when the paintings sell. All right, now this is a awesome question from 
Kathleen, EduConscience, um, let's see. Do you have to get permission from the commission? I am so glad you asked that question because people always wonder about this. You don't have to get permission. Now, I do make a point to let everyone know that Drew retains the copyrights and all reproduction rights to the artwork. And we also operate with integrity. And what I mean by that is even though legally we can, you know, take this image and use it for another concert or something, we wouldn't. We would only use it for the other million things that it wasn't used for. Um, when it comes to like bands and uh, music bands and things like that, because they wouldn't like it. And, um, you know, we're not, we're just not going to do that. So, and we don't have to, we have a, you know, we have enough artwork and, and we can create new things for, for new things. Um, but we will use the art for a million other things. And so I recommend that whenever you're giving someone a quote for a commission, and now that you know that this is a possible business model, right, for you, in your quote, always include a statement that says, artist retains all ownership to all copyrights. And you know what? I'm even going to put this in a banner right now. Hold on. I'm going to create a banner. I'm going to type it. Um, and basically it says artist retains um, ownership to copyrights, copyrights, and all reproduction rights. So add this to your, add this statement to all your invoices, add it to your website, add it to, you know, if you have a website page where it talks about commissions, add that to that page, include it in all your proposals, um, price quotes and all that stuff. And if someone says, what does that mean? And some people will question it. Most don't, most people never question it. Um, but sometimes they do. And I say, well, that means that we have the right, or I have the right as the artist, I have the right to sell prints of this in the future, to license it, to do whatever I want with it. And it's good to let people know this up front. And I have found that almost nobody has a problem with it. Really, no one. And, and maybe it's because, you know, for us, like our clients kind of know our business model. They know that Drew does this. And, and if we get a new client, we kind of educate them. And every now and again, somebody will say, well, um, I want to have all the rights to your work. Can I, you know, I want that. And I'll say, yeah, you can, but it's going to cost you about a hundred thousand dollars because that's how much it could cost us in future revenues. And in some cases, it could cost us a half a million dollars in future revenues if it's a big hit. You know, just like a hit song, you're going to have hits with your art. And you really cannot know what that hit is going to be until time goes on because you don't have a crystal ball. You don't know. You know? Okay. Let's see. Another question. Here's a good question from Carly. Where do you have the most success selling the prints you make? Do you do online business, galleries, art festivals? Well, this the answer to this question really varies from artist to artist. I know some artists where they make all their money doing, all, doing live festivals. They travel. I know a lot of artists where this is their business model. And so, the, yeah, they sell a lot of art prints when they're traveling. Other artists sell a ton online through um, their own website and doing advertising campaigns. And that is quite an investment. And you have to be serious about what you're doing to invest in that 
and invest not just the money, but the time because the advertising is tricky. You can spend thousands of dollars before you figure out how to make it work. For Drew and I, most of his prints are sold off his website. And when we do email blasts to his newsletter list, that's where we sell the most. And his newsletter list is worth gold to us. So if you have a newsletter list, or if you are just starting one, just know as you grow it, that is where the money is at. Because even though we think email's dead, email is not dead. If you do your newsletter right, your the people on your newsletter list will um, look forward to getting your emails. So that's a that's a whole nother Oprah <laughs> episode. <laughs> that's a whole nother story, a whole nother thing. I need to teach a class on that because there is a strategy to writing emails in a way that makes people want to open them. All right, let's see. I have some good, more good questions here. When you license something, do you usually charge a flat price or do you take a percentage of sales? Okay, this is a whole nother hour. I'm going to give you a really quick answer. There are many different ways to do it. When I work with a small company or like a short one-time use, like, like the um, concert poster, flat fee. Don't even bother with royalties. There won't be any um, because it's, it's advertising, really. It's for their advertising. And yeah, they were selling some t-shirts and so forth, but certain clients are not set up to pay royalties. Companies that do licensing all the time, they are set up for royalties. And so you're going to do royalties like if you're um, greeting cards. You know, you're going to get paid royalties. You're going to do a royalty deal. So um, it really depends. And I urge you, if you have, if you're truly interested in this, click the link in the description, take my art licensing 101 course. And I deep dive into that. Um, you, you will learn specifics, dollar amounts. I mean, I tell you, so many things that nobody's ever going to tell you about money and licensing because I really like to do that. And I do save that for people who take my course because my lives are a little too public to tell you how much people pay, pay us for licensing. But in the course, I do actually tell you real money amounts. Okay. Good question from Abby. What form of high res image is best to send to the client? Again, this depends on what the client wants. Uh, we usually send PDFs or PSDs, which is like a Photoshop file or a TIFF. Sometimes JPEGs work, you know, it, just whatever the client needs. It, they will tell you how they want it. Um, okay, Ed Taylor asks, what did you use to create the banner? I'm not <laughs> sure which banner you're talking about. Are you talking about the banner here in StreamYard that I'm using for this live or what? Um, write in the comments and I'll, I'll, I'll answer it when I get more specifics on that. Okay, so I'm going to give you one more example. And um, please ask questions. I want to know what's on your mind. And if I missed a question, ask it again. Sometimes I miss things in this live stream for some reason. Okay, so here's another example. Drew got hired to create 29 illustrations for a very large, but huge company, mega huge company. I mean, this, this project took a year and a half. Um, so Drew likes to create original paintings. So this painting on the wall behind me is one of those 29 paintings. And so what he did was he created these illustrations 
and made 29 paintings all in the same size, 40 inches by 30 inches on Frederick's Pro Canvas, top quality canvas. And um, he gave the, the company, the, le the licensee, the company that commissioned the work, just the high res images. And because this is a mega brand called Mother Earth Grow, and they have a need for these images for a lifetime, we actually gave them exclusive rights for a lifetime, which I normally would never do. And actually they're the only company we've ever done that with, but this was a huge deal for us. And um, we kept the rights to the paintings. So we've sold a lot of the paintings. Um, we still have probably half of them here um, available for sale, but we've sold a good number of them. And we also sell prints, print reproductions. Let me see. Oh, I didn't, I didn't bring one in, but, but we sell print reproductions of the paintings on canvas and paper prints. And what's really cool about it is because this brand is so big, um, they sell these giant soil products in mainstream stores like Lowe's, like hardware stores. And Drew's name is actually on the artwork. And so it's introduced a lot of new people to Drew's art um, that otherwise wouldn't be introduced to it. And I'm telling you in five or 10 years, this art is gonna be really iconic. And the fact that we kept the rights to sell fine art prints of this art, I mean, we haven't scratched the surface in five or 10 years, it's gonna sell really, really well. So that's how you leverage your art. And if you wanna know more about this, please sign up for my art licensing 101 course. It's, I have to say it's really good because I just tell you everything I know and details, 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 details. Um, okay, I'm going to answer Ed's question, even if it's off topic, Ed, because I can't look at a question and not answer it. StreamYard, you have to have the paid version, and it's real easy. There's a little thing that I click right here um, that says banners, and I can just make a banner as I go. So you have, But you have to have the paid version. St I love StreamYard. I love it because I can just like pop questions up on here. Okay, uh, another great question from Kathleen, Edu Conscious. What do you use to get the print reproductions? Well, so there's a lot of ways to do it. If you're going to get canvas prints, you can order them online. There are a ton of canvas, there are a ton of companies out there printing reproductions. Fine Art America, Pixels.com, um, Oh my gosh, so many to choose from, right? And the quality varies. You can also use a local printer. Now what we do with our print reproductions, um, we actually have a business partner, a new business partner um, that prints all of our reproductions for us and he's got a printer and so we order them from him. But they're... I'm going to show you an example of a very low cost way of print reproductions. You go to a printer, like a local printer, a company that prints um, business cards and stuff and have them use heavyweight stock and print a hundred. It's very affordable. It'll cost you a hundred bucks. And you can, you know, we sell these for uh, $39.95. 40 bucks and I paid a dollar for it. Plus I paid for the, the um, backing and the clear bag, which you can get at clearbags.com. Highly recommend it. You can get both at clearbags.com. Okay. Um, so gosh, I mean, I told you everything you need to know to get started. Thank you for being here. I am doing live streams every day this week. So same time tomorrow and tomorrow I have a guest, Ronnie Walter, and she is, you're going to fall in love with Ronnie Walter. 
let me just tell you, you can't not fall in love with her. So I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your questions. Ah.